Here's a project that's been plagued with false starts, like all of my projects. I've got my old Sturger PABX here that I'm slowly working on hooking things up to. I can't remember what I've talked about. Hmm, I think I mentioned this. Yes, I did. Of course I did, because I fixed it. Um, anyway, I've got the, the channel bank mounted. I've got my HDSL stuff. Power supply, I built a nice little box for and shoved that in there. Uh, and I've got my Bix block mounted here. And uh, this is kind of all I need for my capacity. Um, so today, I'm going to do a little bit of a demonstration on doing a, a Bix termination and that kind of thing. So the cable plugs in to the bottom of the channel bank here. If I can pick the cap out. There we go. Cap comes out. Cable goes in. And then what I want to do is route it up into here and terminate it on a block somewhere in there. So something kind of like... Uh, so my plan is to kind of do something like that and then the cable from there'll be two 25 pair cables two and the maybe three from the phone system here and routed somewhere up above uh, or down there and loop it around and come up to the same spot um, so I got to kind of think of that when I'm routing this and keeping my bend radiuses rational I think I'm fairly close there so I'm just about out of these little guys because I used them all up on my DC cabling. Got a little carried away. But I think I don't need many for this. And the two I have should do it. I'm going to put one kind of here. just enough kind of preload to keep that plug where it should be and uh, you know one ought to be enough so my first zip tie because in short order there will be more cables in here all the data guys are going no zip ties are bad this is kind of a set it and forget it situation this stuff goes in once so the typical Bix installation instructions say you give yourself 16 inches of extra cable beyond the end of the panel. So uh, I'm eyeball 16 inches, call it that, and that gives me. I've got 150 feet of this stuff coiled up here, so I'm not too worried. Uh, it's actually nicer stuff than this, but this is terminated. The other stuff ain't. So that is supposed to be, let's zoom in, shall we? Yes. So, got my wee zip tie. Actually, I don't want to do that yet. Um, that'll get strapped down there and then the jacket removed from that point on. So I need to, so I'm just gonna mark that right there. So in order to uh, hack the insulation off. So how I like to do this is to take a sharp knife score the uh, jacket not cutting it and just scoring it all the way around and then um, especially with older cable where the uh, plasticizers have kind of given up a little well, not today though usually it'll just go pop and pop apart but not today so today I get to massage it uh, really what am I doing? I should do this. Start here, cut that open. It's funny how you forget things. <laughs> Almost cut it. Open her up and find the rip cord, which is hiding in here. Not to be confused, there's two cords in here. There's one that's fuzz that's kind of. Let's see if we can see that. Inside here, there's this fuzz that's wound um, helically around all the pairs 
and then there's this, which is the rip cord. What I like to do is take a screwdriver, kind of wrap it around the rip cord, and then have it slide off immediately. Give it a pull. And pull. Now, where did I score? Right. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Crap. Well, sometimes that happens. Ripcord pulled out. Because it's such a short length of cable, there's just not enough friction holding it together. So, I guess I'm back to doing it the hard way. deeper. Ta-da! Alright, I'm going to leave all that stuff on there until I get this thing strapped down. the other way. Oh, close enough. Well, I don't really like that. Kind of shortchanged myself. Close enough. I lie because it bugs me. Urgh. Oh well. So now, This mess, fuzzy stuff. That was tangled up in everything. Now we take the QC Bix 1A, uh, which have these little tabs in them there, which are so that one can zip tie through them with wee little zip ties. Just kind of loosely. Way to do this is you're supposed to put a zip tie on one end, give yourself around seven inches of slack, clip a roo this thing into there, and, uh, and then start hammering down the pairs. Well, Not hammering them down, not punching them down yet. So what we want to do? Right. Yeah, you know what? Kind of get. I'm debating because I was the way I've been showing this is to do like a double back kind of dealy. Correct me if I'm wrong. People who know this better, the Bix manual says one way. I was shown by Telco guy. Um, different way. So we're going to do it his way because I kind of like it more. Blue line, blue. So now there's just a whole bunch of fiddling pairs in. Um, the majority of the, the Bix installs I have done are actually Gigabix, which is neat stuff. I thought it was a great technology. Um, but CAT 6A, 25 pair, really stringent requirements. Um, why is this being just a pain in the... I don't like that. Why is orange way...
I got my hairs funny. <laughs> Orange. The nice thing about Cat 6 is the pair is glued together because they're twisted so tight. Alright, well, I'm in the home stretch. Violet. <laughs> I love the twist in Cat 3. Cat 3 fits that. I don't think this is even cat categorized. Blue. Violet. Try to keep some twist in it. Orange. Guessing that's green. Yep. Violet brown. Slate. It's not gray. It's slate. All right. Now we check our work. White, 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 white. Red, 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 red. Black, black, black. Yellow, 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 yellow. Blah, blah, blah. Blue, orange, green, brown, slate. Blue, orange, green, brown, slate. Blue, orange. Slate blue, orange, green, brown. Good to go. So here's the uh, end of the Bix tool. Canon conveniently flips the orientation. Um, it's got a cutter, cutting, oh, cutting side and the non-cutting side. Um, and if you use them backwards, it cuts all your wires off and instead of cutting off the waste wire. So always make sure it's pointing the right way. Let's start the punching. So it helps when you're busy doing that to um, kind of run the color code through your head as you're doing it just as a final check because I've done that and I'll get to a wire I'll be doing the color code and going whoa wait a minute that's not right and if you haven't memorized oh I guess I should tell what I'm doing so now oh that's done one simply flips this over and enjoys their complete termination and then that can kind of just tuck into that space that will get hidden behind the designation strip Which goes like that. Oh, that zip ties the wrong way. That's why. There we go. Oh, I to turn that off too. So that's done. Finally. So uh, I think we'll do a bit of DC power stuff next and uh, power the PBX back on. It hasn't been on for a few months now. So anytime I had this thing powered up in my previous videos, where did I put it? Racing. So anytime I've had this thing powered up in my previous videos, um, I was just using one of those, I still am, uh, just a eBay Chinese 48 volt power supply. Um, it was just laying on top with the uh, 110 volt cord just wired in. Um, and I amazingly didn't die, because I know to not touch it, because I'm not stupid. Um, 
But some people aren't convinced of that. They're convinced that if you have any exposed electrical terminals laying around, that you'll spontaneously burst into flames and die a horrible death. Um, so I built this box. Um, I should probably close that. Uh, just to give me a place to put a switch here and to kind of contain the power supply and make it look a little nicer. Um, and you'll notice this power supply is a fan. And this box has no holes. So I'm doing a bit of an experiment here at the same time. Uh, we're done looking inside, I guess. Uh, and that experiment is... Um, I picked up some industrial control stuff at the uh, scrapyard. And I noticed that there were a couple big solid-state relays inside. This thing had um, some kind of temporary CSA approval. So we've been inspected, I'm assuming. Some kind. But anyway, uh, it was relying on just the surface area of the sealed enclosure to dissipate the heat. Um, so this thing is an aluminum enclosure. This is 8th inch aluminum um, front, back, sides, and bottom. The back stuck against the wood. Uh, but I'm hoping that... I have just enough, there's enough surface area there that uh, just the passive cooling will be enough that, I mean, the fan will still run, it'll just circulate the air inside the box to all this surface, which will help dissipate that heat. Um, so I've run it for a few hours with, with all of this stuff powered up, all of this stuff, the channel bank and that. I think the channel bank draws 200 milliamps of fluid volts on idle, something like that, really though. I haven't looked at what um, the HDSL2 card draws, uh, not a lot. Um, and it stayed cold. Um, it was inside. It wasn't super warm. But, uh, whatever. If it doesn't work, I'll cut it open. I'll cut a hole in there, punch a hole for the fan, put the fan and punch some holes up in the top so there's airflow. Um, but, for uh, now, I think it's good enough. Uh, this is some 14 gauge um, stranded wire. All right, so I've un unwound those wires. Um, they're just kind of piled up on the floor here, but that's good enough for now. The other thing I've done since we visited uh, the system last is um, I, I fixed some stuff here. Take that off. So these, uh, there's wooden blocks at the top and bottom of this. Um, the ones that came with the system were, they were done. Um, so I found some matching paint and made new ones and Drilled some finger holes uh, for the top one. The bottom one's completely blocked off because I don't plan on going down. Uh, and the other thing I added was this terminal strip here. I added this terminal strip here, and what that gives me is a place to bring the DC into to terminate. That's not inside the cabinet because it's a bit of a hassle getting it into the cabinet. The fronts and sides have to come off. I don't know. I it felt weird being in there, so I added this out here. So every single one of my spade terminals are in the house, and I don't feel like going to get them. So I just use some ring terminals. And screw. I think there's some kind of telco color code for wiring. Uh, blue and white, I think. But I did red and black just to stop me from making really stupid mistakes and wrecking things. Although the most sensitive piece of equipment is probably the channel bank and I've already managed to attempt to reverse the polarity on that and uh, luckily the guys at Adtran foresaw my stupidity and put some protection diodes on there which is handy. Okay. Now I can close this thing with power connected. That's all connected, jam the wires up there out of the way. I think we're ready to turn it on. I double, triple check to make sure my polarities are all good. This I've already tested out. Um, the thing I haven't tested is the full load. Uh, I can't remember the rating of this power supply, but. Well, this isn't bursting into flames. Well, it sounds good. Everything's running, power supply. I didn't even hear it. He's having a good time. He's he's going. Let's uh let's connect the phone. So I have a phone connected to keep things authentic. This is property of Edmonton Telephones. This was an Edmonton telephone system. Um, Edtel. So it 
this would have worked with this system. Um, so the you can hear the fan giving her on that thing. Let's uh, create some load. Hmm, not too bad. Well, I'm watching the LED on the back of the HDSL2 card, and it's not flashing or dimming. So, well, the regulation on supply is not too not too shabby. Um, there's nothing I can really call right now. Um, but I did have a comment asking about this system is um, it's a British system, but it has North American tones. Um, and uh, due, due to a quirk of the way the interrupter is wired, uh, it's very obvious that it's a non-native cadence when you listen to the busy tone. So I'm just going to call this phone, I think I'm 21, yeah. and uh, we'll listen to the busy tone. So that's, that's kind of neat. I didn't actually realize. I've never paid too close attention. It's a 25 pole uniselector that's acting as the interrupter, but it's wired as a 50 pole, so it has two brushes. So one brush enters, does 25 steps, and then it leaves another brush enters and does another 25 steps. Um, and so because it steps, uh, it's pulsing twice a second. Um, so if you take 25 divided by, because there's 25 poles on a section, 25 divided by 2 is 12 and a half. So every 12 and a half seconds, you'll notice the cadence is messed up. Um, but because it's two banks of contacts, um, they they spread it around. So there's actually 12 and a half seconds, and then um, a second and a half long tone, and then 12 and a half seconds, and then a second and a half long silent period. Um, when a busy signal should be one second on, one second off, but it doesn't fit on the interrupter the way it's wired. So anyway, that's kind of neat. Um, seems to make some noise, but it doesn't seem too upset. The fan picks up with it. Keeps the noise down. And nobody to call. Not until this is sorted out. Put that there. Uh, so my plan is to run... There'll be two more Bix blocks here which tie into the system. And I'll be able to cross-connect twenty up to 24 phone extensions. To my house, as I mentioned in the other video, this is will be connected to a piece of cable that's coming out of the ceiling over there. Um, that'll feed a, an HDSL2 circuit over a single pair to my basement, um, where there is another one of these, and that'll break it back out to 24 lines. But the other thing that let me do as well is go the other way around, and um, I've got uh, a landline, if you can call it that anymore. It's on fiber, but I can take that port off of um, the little Nokia magic fiber box. I take that port and I can feed it back through the same T1 because I can put um, FXO cards on either end and feed it back this way into this system so that um, those extensions in the house can use this system and use the phone line in the house. I only have one FXO card. I'm supposed to have two. Um, so I need to find another one. I gotta do some more eBay to pick that up because right now I don't I can only go one way. I think they're four yeah they're four channel cards so I can feed four phone lines off the system into the house over a piece of four pair of cat five. We'll get there. So yeah that's the update on that system. There there were delays because I added a third linotype into my garage uh, and uh, 
to do that, I had to rearrange everything. And this system is, uh, I should get in the frame, is, uh, it's on wheels now, and I can hardly even get to one side of it. Um, which is why I need all this length up here is because what I want to be able to do is pull it out when I need to to work on the other side and then roll it back in. So all of those connections will be, uh, I don't know if I'll just leave some slack on the cable and roll it up on top, probably. But that'll give me flexibility further down the road I decide to move things around. Um, I had a bigger board set up for this and changed my mind on that and figured I'll just make it small so it, it fits where I have space. I don't need too much. There's some other stuff I want to do, but for now, this gets me going. And it... I feel more comfortable with leaving this thing powered on once I, I'll do a bit of stress testing with this power supply. So the, the power and the, the three, two or three 25 pair cables I talked about, it'll probably be two 25 pairs and a couple of these uh, four pair cables to tie this system in is what's needed next. So I need to find myself a, um, what they call it, the butterfly tool to install those things. The plastic version, the champ tool, or some more of whatever gender those are, connectors. Uh, I can just do them by hand. But that's what I need next. I've got the 25 pair cable waiting here to run all over, but I'm blathering on. I should plug another phone in. I totally forgot. I have my Hi Chris butt set here that uh, I can uh, pulse mode. Yeah. So I can actually complete some calls to myself. Just uh -huh. Let's turn this on. Speaker. Why is that not dialing? The battery's dead. It's trying. What's going on there? Hmm. I managed to split a pair on the uh, cross connect there. Good thing I have this unused patch panel. All right. There's some discussion about the called party hangs up first. Oh, look at that. That's what I thought. On resource-starved systems like this thing, they made every effort to make sure that it was very difficult for um, individual extensions to tie up the system, to do a, a denial of service attack, basically, or by stupidity. Um, so there's thermal delay relays in this thing that handle things like that. And there's one more just clicked again. Um, so this system won't hang... You, you can't freeze a lineup. Um, so if I hang up and then pick up now, yeah, of course I have my line back. There we go, that answers the question. Either party hangs up first, the system will recover. So that's that. Can you hear me now? How is the sound quality? How is the sound? Johnson, I'll need that report by noon. Hello. Memory card is going to be wrong. Airplane, 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 airplane.